Hello everyone, welcome to William in the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Sam. Sam is from Orlando in Florida in the USA. So let's see what Sam has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello Sam, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Very well, thanks so much for taking the time this morning for the interview, thank you. Absolutely, thank you for having me. This is pretty cool. So tell me, how's your morning going so far? So far, so good. I already had my coffee, so you already know I'm ready for the day. As long as I have coffee, I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, so far, what has been the highlights of your weekend? Uh, the highlight would have to be uh, the rugby game that we played yesterday. Um, we did really, really well. We won 63 to 33, so it was a really good win for our team, and we feel really good about it. <laughs> Amazing. Actually, I made the note here about, I was checking your profile and I could see your, you know, your career, your passion about rugby. So let's start the interview talking about that. So tell me um, how rugby came into your life. How did you start it playing? Um, well, I never considered rugby, like ever. Like, I, growing up, I was always in band in high school, um, in college. That's how I got to college. So I would never played contact sports. Um, in the city of Orlando, they have like um, this uh, gay league, they call it out sports and they have kickball, dodgeball, volleyball, soccer. So I was playing kickball for a while. Um, and one of my friends decided to go try rugby. Um, and he was begging me for like a month and a half, two months to come out and try it. Um, and I was like, no, you're crazy. I like, I like being healthy and not have any broken bones. So um, after about a month and a half, two months, he dragged me to practice. Um, and that was now two and a half years ago. Wow. So ever since then, um, I don't know, something about it just makes me, it made me feel like I wanted to get better, like I wanted to learn more. Um, gives me a bit of more uh, direction in the gym. Uh -huh. um, But yeah, so I, one of my friends, his name is Kim, Kimball. Um, he dragged me into rugby and ever since then I've been playing. Wow. And do you play uh, very often? How many days per week do you play every day? How does it work for you, your schedule? We don't play every day. We practice twice a week on Tuesdays and Sundays. Um, and usually for, the, for each season, we try to have two away games and two home games because we're, we're also a new team. So we're the only... Um, gay inclusive rugby team in florida right now oh. um and so we're trying to get a lot more people involved a lot more people um comfortable with the idea of rugby and that anybody can play and we can actually learn and be good as a team doesn't matter where you come from so um we're, we're still trying to get more people involved uh to get in into rugby amazing Okay, Sam, so tell me uh, where are you from? I was born in Puerto Rico. Born there, but I was raised in Florida. Um, I am bilingual. I, I can still speak Spanish, um, but I was only there until I was two. And then our family moved here in 94. So. Okay. And do you get to visit sometimes or not? Not as often as I like. The last time that I visited was in 2013. Two. I see. Uh, February 22. Uh, and before that, it was like 15 years. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's not as often as I'd like, but as, an, like, as, as I grow older and more curious of um, the island, I, I, I'm definitely going to be going a lot more often. I see. And your parents, they are from Puerto Rico? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, first generation. Uh, What do you stateside, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And tell me what you do for work for living, Sam. So right now I'm working uh, with medical equipment. Um, so I essentially go uh, to each hospital within our network and I help <laughs> them track their, uh, their medical equipment. So I put trackers on them. I also build out a, a digital map of each hospital so that way they can find the equipment easier. Um, but that's what I'm doing right now. Amazing. Okay, so during the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views, okay? 
Absolutely. Sam, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Let's go. Let's do it. Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have <laughs> my best friend. Of random fun questions. I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to relax before the first question, okay? Sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yes, you always can dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> so before we start the journey, doing the game, if it comes up a question that you don't wanna talk about, you don't wanna answer, always can change, okay? Absolutely. First question for you is, what was your favorite thing to do as a kid? My favorite thing to do as a kid? Hmm. It would have to be uh, every Saturday. Um, my older sisters and my nieces and nephews would come to my mom's house and we'd all just have like, I'd call it like a party because I didn't know any better as a kid, but we would just barbecue. Uh, my parents would be in the front and uh, us kids which was me my sister that's a year older than me and then I had five nephews and one niece so <laughs> we'd literally just be running everywhere through the neighborhood chasing the dogs in the woods it was it was very 90s a very 90s vibe <laughs> <laughs> and um which person in your family um you feel more close to you you feel more connected with Honestly, I I have a pretty close connection with everyone in my family. Um, we we grew up that way. Um, <laughs> yes, we bicker and we fight, and it's not nowhere near perfect. But I feel like I can go to anyone in my family and just be like, "Hey, I have an issue. Can you hear me out?" And they'll do it. That's amazing. And your 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 sister and your parents they live as well in Orlando. Yes, um, my mom. My mom and my sisters are here, but I have, I'm one of nine altogether. <laughs> wow. Um, mostly on my dad's side. On my mom's side, it's me and three older sisters. Um, I have on my dad's side, two older brothers, and I think it's what, five, five other sisters. Um, but it's a big, it's a big, big family. <laughs> Did you ever get all together or not? No, not not in the way that I'd like. Um, it'll either be like, um, but not all. I see. Okay. Next question. Let's do it. Hey, Sam. Next question is, what is the biggest difference between you and your best friends? The biggest difference between me and my best friends, I feel like they're funnier than me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think that's probably why we're best friends because I feel like they're hilarious. Um, but they're they're super like I like being around people that are like funny and have this humor about life because it's some people take it too serious. But um, yeah, they're way funnier than me, and I just like listening to them and being around them when they're hilarious. <laughs> And the biggest similarity between you and a best friend, what that would be? Um, we're random. Like, we just like doing random and saying random things. We'll be out hanging out or, you know, eating something. And, you know, we'll just literally just break into a memory. You know, oh my God, do you remember this one time in band camp? You know, <laughs> like just in the middle of wherever. And we're, we just like to have a good time. So we're just random. And I, I feel like that's, that's a way to keep things, uh, you know, alive. When you think about yourself, Sam, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being you? What do you like the most about being Sam? That is a good one. Um, <clears throat> that's deep. Um, well, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm currently, I'm currently in a journey, um, to value myself a little bit more um, mm -hmm. and to have a better relationship with myself because I, I tend to give energy away and not conserve for myself. So I'm in that journey right now. Um, so that question is really, really good. Um, 
However, I will say that uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say the resilience to keep pushing. Because um, there's a couple times where I could have just gave up um, and just said to hell with everything. So I would say I'm, I'm pretty resilient. I like that about myself. Do you believe that right now, at the moment of your life, you are living your best life right now? I'm in the process of living my best life. Um, it's it's been a time like these past couple of years have been a little bit rough. Um, so I'm kind of just trying to realign myself mentally, emotionally, mm-hmm. to learn to live. Excuse me, to learn to live in the moment not to think too far into the future and not to worry too much about the past because then you forget to live now. So I'm, I'm in that process. And when was the moment that we started this journey that we are going right now? When was the moment that you said, okay, I need to work myself. I need to work the surround me. I need to, you know, to, to, uh, as you said about energy, I need to focus um, more this energy about me and, you know, of course, not giving away too much energy, but keeping to myself as well. There was a moment or a situation that you kind of um, wake up or not, it just happened naturally. Um, a little bit of both. So I was on a work trip. I travel for work. So I was out in, on the West coast of Florida on you know, Clearwater. Um, and the beach is right there and I love the beach. So every day after work, I would make it a point to go to the beach and, um, being by myself, I, I process things a lot. Like, I just think about a whole lot of things. And it was one of those moments where I was at the beach, looking out at the water, the sun was setting and I was like, I, I need to change something. I have to, I have to, something has to change because. I, this doesn't sound really too happy, but I tend to be a really sad person in my head. Sure. You sure. know, like, I, yeah, I, I don't, it's life, you know, just general things, but yep. you know, I tend to be like sad and I don't know why. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe it's because I'm a millennial and I miss the good old days before, you know, <laughs> technology took over, but, um, You know, so I was at the beach and I was just thinking like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to feel this. I, I, I want to be able to be comfortable with myself by myself, um, and be okay. And not to say that I, you know, you know, I don't like being around people or anything, but, um, to, to go back to my point earlier, like I give energy, I give, um, uh, I give myself away, um, And I tend to forget that I am a person too. <laughs> like that sounds so crazy, but I forget that I exist to myself. So I want to, I want to be able to conserve some energy for myself and, you know, just fill my cup with me and then whatever overflows I can share with everyone else. It's so beautiful what you just said now, um, Sam, that I even got goosebumps now. I think it's very powerful. I think, uh, I mean, trust me, you're not alone out there. There are so many people, including myself as well, sometimes we find sometimes of our lives that we are sad for no reason. Sometimes you go like, my God, what's happening to me? And sometimes <laughs> there is this click, as you said, about the water. I think being in touch with nature, the water is so powerful yes that's why i'm like you i love going to the beach as well because somehow my god it's like i recharge my batteries i i i just i'm scorpio my star sign is, is scorpio and um our element is water i don't know if it's because of that but when i'm in the water it could be a river or the sea there's something about it that i i, I start to get myself in in some moments that i start to analyze myself And I understand your point. It's just, it's, it's sometimes life just clicks like that and you go like, oh, wait a minute, let me focus on this or that. And that's how it works. So trust me, you're not alone out there. And I love the way you talk so open about it as well, because when you talk about it, it means that you start the journey that's, you know, to improve yourself or it's amazing. It's powerful. Yes. Uh, it took a while to get there, but, but I, I'm, a, I'm a Pisces, so I get you. I, you know, like that, that something about that water element just makes you feel connected. Totally, absolutely understand as well. Amazing. Thanks for sharing. I think it's amazing, not just for for yourself, but also for people watching this interview right now. They might go like, "Oh, actually, 
I, I've been this place before, or I'm facing that as well, or maybe, you know, I'm going to go through that. And I think it's all about, you know, healing and helping others as well. That's how I see. Great. Yes. Next question. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so before the next question, tell me... Um, What's the biggest joy of your job? What do you like the most about your job? And the flip side, what do you find most challenging about your career? Um, I like that I'm physically helping someone who's going to be attached to that piece of equipment. So I ensure that that equipment is working um, and whoever's going to be on the other end of that is going to get proper service. So um, in one hand, I feel like it's it's a big part of the, the healthcare system. Um, mm -hmm. because if they're getting like those machines, it's uh, infusion pumps. So it's what, you know, feeds people, it, it gives them medicine, things like that. So if they're not working properly, they're either going to get overdosed, underdosed, or, you know, something bad can happen. So, um, there's a, a pretty high importance to it. Um, the negatives, Sometimes it's just awkward being in the hospital. Like it's, it's sometimes the energy can be heavy, you know, and yeah. you're just like, mm. so it can just, the energy can be heavy in hospitals. Okay. Next question is, I think this one's going to be very easy for you. Where is the most exotic place have you ever been? Exotic. Um, I haven't really traveled too far out of the States, but I got my passport this year. Um, I, I, not necessarily exotic, okay. but I would have to say Seattle, Washington. Oh, wow. Um, it's, it's not necessarily exotic, but the, the geographic location of Seattle is absolutely gorgeous. They, they have the water, they have the mountains, they have the Pacific Ocean on the other side of the Olympic mountain. Like it's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous place. I fell in love with it. Amazing. Great. And tell me something, if I would come to Orlando for the very first time, what is a place that I shouldn't miss, miss it? it? What's the postcard of the city in your opinion? It has to be Walt Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone comes to Orlando and they go to Disney. I, I will say though, no shade to Disney. I. Universal is about to open up their Epic Universe Park this coming in 2025. So it might change. So when you do, when that does open, I would go there first and then go to Disney to relax because it's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> Actually, I used to work for Disney Cruise Line um, in Orlando. I was based in Port Canaveral. No so, way. Yes. In 2016, I was working for Disney Cruise Line. So I had a short contract and um, one, it was one of the most best experience of my life. And actually, um, I'm originally from Brazil. And back in Brazil, the, the place where I come from, the, 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 the temperature, the weather is exactly the same. I'm not from the seaside, but it's warm and hot. I was like, oh my God, I felt like my childhood memories when I was in Orlando. <laughs> in, in Florida. <laughs> but yes, it was an experience that I'll never forget, I think. How far are you from uh, Port Canaveral? It's not very far, is it? Not far. Know. It's like maybe an hour. Yeah. Depending on traffic. Amazing. Next question. Ready? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Next one. Okay. Some next question is, tell me something that made you laugh a lot this weekend or for the last past week. Something that, you know, you crack laughing that you could stop, couldn't stop. This is probably going to be controversial. Okay. Ish. Um, it's uh, through my my for you page on TikTok and on um, Instagram. There's just a lot, a lot of memes and um, little short cartoon videos of the whole Divi situation. And some of them are actually really hilarious, just the way they're with the with the baby oil and all that stuff. So. Some of those really just get me, and I'm, I sh probably shouldn't be laughing at it, but people get creative, and what are, what, what do you do, you know? But some of those some of those memes really very dark humor, but 
they're, they're, they're funny. I get your point. I think, you know, sometimes as well, when I open my, you know, my social media, I go like, my God, how people, they have this imagination to create so many memes, like, and they're so funny that it's impossible for you to not laugh. Could be something dark, could some, you know, it's just so funny, like the way they put all together. It's just hilarious. Yes. Yeah. It's, some, sometimes they get me, they get me. <laughs> it, dark, dark humor is my favorite and... I, I, yeah. <laughs> Three questions left. Let's do it. For the next question, um, by the way, I love your t shirts. I love your, your t shirt. Oh, amazing. Thank wow. you. I had, I had to represent my team. <laughs> Am oh, amazing. Great. Come something before the next question, Sam. Um, being a, a gay or queer boy, yeah, like for you, tell me how was your experience growing up? You know, um, your parents from Puerto Rico, you were growing up in Orlando, in Florida. So tell me a little bit about your experience. And did you have the support of your family growing up? Tell me a little bit about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as a kid, it was one of those things, kind of like most people where you're like, I'm probably gay, but I'm not going to admit it to myself or to anybody else. So I carried myself accordingly um, throughout school, specifically high school. Um, like I had girlfriends and things just so that way nobody would guess or something, you know, nobody would think. Um, I went, I went as far as to switch high schools because, you know, some people might be like, oh, I think he's, I think he's gay. Like he, he's not. So I'd be like, mm, let's go to this different school and let me try something different. So people want to, like, it got to that point. Like I switched schools three times anyway. Um, but after, after high school, I went to college and it was, I think two, gosh, no, it was after school. It was like after high school, after college, when I came out, I came out at 23. 23 so I was a late a late bloomer I was already in seeing someone and that's what kind of pushed me to come out um the first person I came out to was my dad which was probably not the first person you want to tell um but we we were talking on the phone and he said something something like derogatory I forgot what he said and then my, like just naturally I was like well what if what if I am gay and he was like, he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, what if I am? Are you, you know, what, what about it? I, you know what? I am, I am gay. So he, he just kind of froze on the phone and he was like, I love you, but I gotta go. And then he hung up. Wow. So <laughs> usually you start with your mom. I don't know why I went, started with my dad, but, um, after that, I told everyone else, um, for the most part, it was pretty support. Like my sisters were like, oh, okay, we were just waiting. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> <laughs> but for my mom and my dad, um, you know, their initial reaction is like, oh, we didn't teach you things like that. I'm like, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Like, really? Um, my mom was the first one to kind of like come around like, you know what? I don't care. You're my son. I just, it doesn't matter. My dad though. <laughs> My dad, you know, it took him a little longer. Uh, yeah, it took him a little longer. Do you think somehow deep inside he knew it or for him was a totally surprise in your opinion? I think, you know how parents can usually tell just by yeah. how you carry yourself. Um, I never brought girls home, mm -hmm. you know, like unless they were like my band friends, um, people that I wasn't like romantic with. So I feel like he knew. Um, but he didn't want to admit it. I see. Um, yeah, he was like, not my, not my son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is, which person do you talk to the most? Um, probably my husband. I talk to him the most. Yeah. Um, every day. We like, he's here this weekend, um, or on the weekends, but he works in Miami. So he'll go down to Miami, work the week, 
and then come up, spend the weekend with me. He plays rugby too. That's how we met. Oh, um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I, I think I feel like I talked to him the most. Um, especially like when he, he gets my humor. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, I have dark humor. So I feel like he gets my humor and I can tell him things and he'll be like, wow, you're not, you're, you're, you're stupid. But he'll laugh with me, you know, he'll, he'll make me feel not too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from Orlando originally. No, he's from Chile. Oh wow! He's closer to your neck of the woods down in Brazil. Oh, amazing! Oh wow! And he's is um he's um like his life is the same like you. He was born there. Oh, sorry, he was born there, and he he moved to to Florida with his family. Correct. Um, but his is like way more recent. So he grew up and he lived there up until two years ago. And then I he see. came over to the States and uh, that's how we met. His sister moved here first and her husband and her kids. And then his parents came and stayed. So it, it's pretty, pretty similar, actually. Not a complete better. Okay, let's see so that your husband is watching this interview right now and you have a moment, an opportunity to send him a message. What would you say? You can say in Spanish first and after you can translate in English. Um, if I can send him a message right now? Yeah, to say something, like anything you could, uh, if you could tell, you know his watch now, you could say something to him, something special, what would you say? Um, amorcito, te quiero, te adoro, y siempre sabes que te apoyo en lo que sea, y yo sé que a veces uh, yo puedo ser difícil, pero te amo, como quieras. So we now can <laughs> in English now translate in English. Um, I basically said, uh, my love, I, I I love you and I support you uh, through thick and thin. Um, I know sometimes I can be a little difficult, um, specifically in my journey. Um, but you know, regardless of any of that, I love you. Beautiful, sweet. I can see him smiling right now. <laughs> I bet his ears <laughs> on the door right now. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Next question is, what do you think are the best traits for a person to have? There's a quote from RuPaul that I'm going to butcher. Um, and I think it goes something like, we're all born naked and the rest is drag. So I like that. Uh, that I say that to say, like, don't take life too seriously. You know, people who don't take life too seriously in a way where it's a detriment. So, you know, we're, we're human. We're, we're faulted by nature. So, um, you know, go, go through every day with grace for yourself. Um, and, you know, the people that get you will get you, and the people that don't, they probably don't need to be around you. But, you know, people that don't take life seriously, you know, life is already hard. You don't have to make it worse. I like that. I agree with you. Um, I think it's true. I think people, they, as long as you, you are treating others and yourself good, you know what I mean? You can be, right. you can be yourself, like how you think it's good for you. Saying that, what's the meaning of life for you? Ooh, the meaning of life. I think... <laughs> I think the meaning of life is figuring out who you are in the world. Because, and I... That sounds so cliche, um, but I, I'm currently going through that journey right now, like figuring out who I am and yeah. liking who I am and um, appreciating what I am to others and, and what I do for the world or how I contribute to the world. But um, figuring out who you are and how you can be the best version of you that you can, because outside of yourself, you can't control. You know what I mean? You really can't control anything outside of yourself. You can only control what you do um, how you feel about the things, you know, it's, 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 uh, everyone has a, 
a specific world lens, you know, um, how that lens compares to others in the world takes adjusting. You have to learn how to adjust and how to flex to the ebbs and flows of life. So, uh, you know, uh, figuring out who you are, I feel like is the meaning of life. Great. Last question, ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's question. Before the last question, Sam, what um, rugby have taught you so far? Rugby, <laughs> rugby has taught me that I can always give more. Even when I think I have nothing left, there's always a little bit more that I can give uh, to support. Um, I sometimes I feel like crazy for playing the sport, like in the middle of the game, like, why am I doing this? I'm tired. I want to go home. And then I look at the people around me and I'm like, they're also here tired and want to go home, but they're still pushing. That means I can push more too. So I can always give more even when I feel like I can't. You know what, when you said, when I look around and I see those guys, I, I will think, oh my God, when you see those hot guys around, it just keep me going. I'm joking. <laughs> that's, that's literally the only reason I joined. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. it. You know, in England, you know, rugby is so big here in England. Yes. And everything. And sometimes I go like, oh my God, when I see those highlights of the games, I just go like, wow. Like, <laughs> let me tell you something. Those England boys, I don't know what they eat. I don't know how they, like, how they, I want it. I want it. Like, just. <laughs> I just want to dive anyway. <laughs> imagine you playing rugby with those English boys. Wow, we met the middle of them. You wouldn't concentrate yourself. You'd be like... <laughs> like, I'd want to get tackled. The point is to not get tackled, but yes, please, tackle me. <laughs> Tell me something. Through your, you know, um, your career since we started playing rugby, tell me a moment or a situation that you're never going to forget, that's always going to have a special place in your heart. Specific to rugby? Yeah. When it's since we started playing, tell me a situation or a moment that for you go like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll never forget that. It was when I scored my first try. And it was against the New Orleans team. Um, I would, I think that was maybe my second game wow. that I've ever played. Um, and seeing, <laughs> scoring the try, looking back, and seeing my entire team cheering me on like we like we got a point we we did that like that was and it was i don't i don't really take it as like a me thing because i was just one piece of the entire puzzle um so seeing like the entire team like supporting you like it's unreal it's unreal it it, it made me respect the sport um it made me respect my team and it was it was very emotional i think i cried <laughs> okay, last question is, what do you like the most about your best friends? At the drop of a hat, I have access to them. Wow. That's my favorite thing about them. Like, it doesn't matter what time of day, night, holiday, it doesn't matter. Like, I can text them and I, I have access to them. And I feel like that's important, not only for, I feel like it's important in general, you know, like if you, if you need something, I'm there. And that's really the, the foundation of a lot of relationships. Like I got you. Absolutely. Okay. It's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game. Okay. I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Big thinking. Let's start with money. Work. <laughs> Fear. Strength. Family. Love. Life. Challenging. Love. Action. Religion. Relationship. Sex. Ugh, I'm thinking too hard on it. Um, intimacy. Um, politics. 
Messy. <laughs> Friendship. Deep. Desire. Oof. That's a good one. Desire. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Desire, I'd say lust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Success. Uh, work ethic. Regrets. Choices. Wish. Manifest. Happiness. Choice. One word for Puerto Rico. Borinquen. <laughs> well, <That's... that's... laughs> what what means? Borinquen is, you know how they refer to Puerto Ricans as Boricuas? Um, and it's, that's the original name of the island, Borinquen. I see. Okay. One word for Orlando. Home. USA, one word. Crazy. <laughs> And the last one now, rugby, one word. One word. I, I have I have a lot of words for rugby. Um I have two words. It's my sport. <laughs> Say again? My sport. Amazing. Okay, so let's pretend now I'm going to meet your husband for a coffee and I'm going to ask him. Define some in one positive word and one negative word only. What he would say? One word? Yeah, positive and negative. Positive would be caring. Okay. Uh, negative would be emotional. <laughs> Okay, sweet. <laughs> let's play now Sam and the Magic Box and can ask me a question. But before that, let's play the music one more time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, Sam, before you ask me the question, what's your favorite Spanish word? Favorite Spanish word? That's a good one. That there's so many. I'm um, okay. It's a food. Altapurria. Mm -hmm. It's a Puerto Rican, like I guess you can call it a fritter. But you have to try it. You have to try it. My favorite. My favorite word is a food in Spanish. Altapurria. Amazing. You can ask me a question now. Speaking of food. Um, I know you're from Brazil and you yeah. live in the UK. In London, yes. What what's your favorite food from the UK? From London? Great question. I start feeling hungry now. I said about your about your, your favorite. <laughs> I would think my gods. Um, okay. I love food. Yes, um, I love. I think I love to eat. I love to, you know, to to taste different foods and um um Okay, I'm gonna go for the most additional one. Actually, I was thinking there is a, a a friend of mine coming from Holland next weekend, and I was thinking about maybe taking him to eat this. It's very simple. It's very English. Fish and chips. It's the, the it's the it's the most traditional <laughs> one here. You know, it's it's um it's very simple. It's uh you know, but somehow I just love it because I don't eat fish very often. Yeah, I should. I think I should. But um when I when I feel like eating. A proper, you know, like food after, you know, a brunch after night out. I would definitely go for fish and chips. So, you know, I love the the, the, the potatoes. You can put some mayo. You can put some, you know, some sauce and the, the fish, fried fish. I think it's um it's simple, but it's something that I like a lot. Living here in London, I'm sure in Orlando as well. You find a lot of cuisines from different parts of the world. Yeah, there are so many. Uh, 
count. Like if I walk down my street here, I can find at least 10 different restaurants from different places around the world. And um, that's, a, that's the, the good part about London because you can find so many cuisines and so many different, you know, kind of foods. But um, if I think about the English style, I'll go for fish and chips for sure. Yeah. I'm very intrigued to come out there and try fish and chips. Yeah. Because it's chips is uh, fries or, you know, what we call yeah. French fries. Yeah. So I'm very intrigued because that's, that's something that I've heard often and that's like the go-to. So if it's a go-to, I went, I went to Canada recently and I tried poutine. I, I love it. I love it. You know, my, my best friend, he lives in Montreal. He lives in Montreal, my best friends. And a few years ago, I tried for the first time. I was like, oh my God, what's that? So when I went last year, the first thing, please, let's have poutine. I love it. So when you think about it, it's like, okay, it's, you know, but gravy they and fries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is amazing. It is so good. <laughs> I love poutine. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's good. It sounds like boring, but it's delicious. So if if fish and chips is anywhere near as good as poutine, sign me up. When you come to England to London for the first time, we're gonna go for a fish and chips for sure. I'm gonna take you enough. <laughs> you can have fish and chips for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Sam, did you like the interview? I did. This was actually really really fun. Thanks so much. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for being so kind and sweet. And also, again. Thanks so much for um, opening up in the beginning of the interview about your journey. And I think it's very inspiring. It's very open. And I think, again, uh, people, they they appreciate that when we talk very open about things in life because somehow we are op uh, helping people as well. So thanks for being so sweet and kind. But before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. Um, positive message, I would just say, there's always going to be an upside to things. It doesn't matter um, how bad it might seem or how tough it is at the moment. Um, there's always tomorrow and we might not know what that tomorrow has, but there's always an opportunity to, you know, work for better and, and to strive for better. Today is not the end. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks so much regards to your husband, your family, and you keep in touch, okay? It was a pleasure having you on the show, okay? Enjoy Thank your day. you so much. You <laughs> too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.